The third thing I noticed in myself, and I was very shocked to find this because I thought this was one shadow I probably didn't have because I've always been able to stand up and tell my truth, whatever happened. I've had death threats, I've been spat on, I've been humiliated, and I have gone on talking and showing up. So I felt that at least I couldn't accuse myself of. But because I really have been through what happens to a whistleblower, which in my case was three years of death threats, day in, day out, and public humiliation, I identified in myself something that I see in almost everybody I know, which is really a terror of standing up and witnessing the truth because of the kind of marginalization, demonization, humiliation, loneliness that follows on from it. One of the reasons I've lived in isolation in the last three years is because I truly came to the point where I had to decide whether I was going to go on teaching at all. And I realized that I would only go on teaching at the level that I wanted to teach if I finally decided that it didn't really matter whatever happened I would have to stand up and be strong enough. And I wasn't strong enough, so I went into a retreat to find the great peace from which to go on being as radioactive a nuisance as I can possibly be, because I'm not going to shut up now. Whatever they do, whatever anybody says. But if you really look at yourself, as I looked at myself that long, terrible afternoon, you'll see that you know how brutal this culture really is and how it claims to be about freedom of self-expression and honoring other people's point of view and tolerance and all the rest of it. But God help the person who calls down in agonized rage the truth, as you were saying. God help the person who talks about the new findings of the environment at a dinner party. God help the person who actually gets up as a lawyer and says, this is garbage that we're doing, can't we have a different approach? God help the person in the corporation who actually calls the corporation on what it's up to because that person will lose their livelihood, will have their peccadilloes exposed will be treated to the most monstrous shaming and really dangerous forms of exclusion and you know it and I know it and look what happened in the 60s when people were brave enough to stand up and confront this whole military industrial complex. Remember Robert Kennedy, remember Martin Luther King? We know that what we're calling a free, democratic, tolerant, expressive culture is actually a surveillance fascist state with all kinds of institutionalized comas in place which prevent the telling of the truth on any level. You can't go on Oprah and talk about the death of the planet. You're not allowed to because you have to be cheerful and have to give sweet possibilities, right? So you have to scavenge in the sidelines of the internet or in free TV, which is watched by three old ladies and myself, to find what's really happening. So never underestimate that terror of really owning up to what you know in a culture that is hell-bent on denial and on keeping a very boring, banal, flat, disgusting, obscene party going. <laughs> 